So let's look at another programming development tool called a flowchart. We're going to look at flowcharts. Now the first thing, a flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm. Therefore, we need to look at how the diagram can be formed. And as shown in this simple diagram, it is it composed of different shapes, different symbols. So every symbol and the individual symbols that make up a, a flowchart, each symbol has a name and as you see each symbol has a shape. So let's go through that. First symbol is to begin the flowchart. So that's the name of the symbol or title of the symbol. This is to begin the flowchart. What does the symbol look like? Well, the shape of it, some might say it's a circle, but that's a little lazy. It's more of an oval shape. And it has the word start within it. And that never changes. You are always going to have start within an oval at obviously the beginning of the flowchart. The next symbol is the input symbol. Notice it looks kind of like a twisted rectangle, twisted square. Again, that's a lazy description. It's more of a parallelogram. Within it, we have the words read data item, which will mimic what you have in your IPO chart. So this symbol is input. The shape of it is a parallelogram. And the information within it is, it comes from, or you get a clue of it from your IPO chart. Next symbol in a flowchart is that of processing. And this is a straightforward shape. This is a rectangle. Within it, of course, is the calculation for the processing. Again, this is given from the IPO chart. So this flowchart symbol is processing and the shape is that of a rectangle. Next symbol is output. The shape of this might look familiar because we've seen it already. The shape is that of a parallelogram. And it has something different though. Um, we've seen it already because we saw it with input. So it's the same shape, but the information written within is different. And that's how you know the difference between the input symbol and the output symbol. So again, this information written within the symbol will come from the IPO chart. The next symbol in the flow chart is the direction symbol. Obviously, it shows the direction of the flow chart. So we're going to use an arrow as a symbol, a single arrow. Notice there are no double arrows here a single arrow and it usually points downward to the next symbol. So this is used to actually connect the symbols and show the flow of the chart, hence the name flow chart. Because as we saw in programming so far is that each step in the algorithm has to take place before next one occurs. 
So one step has occurred and then a next one will follow. So there's a certain sequence of steps. The next flowchart symbol is or shows the end of the flowchart. This is another um, shape that you've seen already because we started with it. This is the oval shape, but the word within it is different. We have stop. Some flowcharts you might see the word end in it, but we're going to use the word stop, start and stop. Right? They match each other. Now this is another one that um, you have to have the word stop. In all the other flowchart symbols, the words within the symbol depended upon the programming question. And you would get hints of it when you create your IPO chart. So if we were to look at a complete flowchart, notice this is a just a, a general example, not a specific question, um, example, not a specific question, a programming question. So it's not a specific flowchart. Okay, of course we have to start. This is the big, this symbolizes the beginning of the flowchart. We have an arrow that takes us, the direction takes us to the next symbol, which is our input. We know it's input because what's written inside of it. Arrow connects us to the next symbol, which is processing. Arrow connects us to the next symbol, which is outputs. And we know this is output because of what is written within it. Arrow connects us to the final symbol, which says stop. So you'll notice that the flowchart follows the same rules as that of an algorithm. The final symbol in a flowchart is that of a decision symbol. This symbol is a little different in that, first of all, the shape is that of a diamond. And within it, you are going to be asking a question. And from this symbol, we have two directions, two arrows coming out of it. Based on the question, the answer can be yes or no. Now, this is different from the other symbols because the other symbols only had a single direction, a single arrow coming from it. This one has two options. Hence the name, a decision symbol. Now, obviously with this decision symbol, the question asked within the diamond shape should be a question where the answer will be yes or no. That should be obvious because there are two arrows that come out from that um, diamond with the answer yes or no. Now each arrow will be pointing to another symbol. I here have a processing symbol and that's just a general example. It can point to input, it can point to output, it could point, of course, to um, processing or stop, or maybe another decision. It depends upon the programming question. Here is another general flowchart showing the use of the decision. We start go into input, go into the decision. Of course, the decision question has a yes or a no. Yes goes to processing, which goes to output. The no goes to processing, which goes to the same output. 
and then we stop. So in this case, the direction is all downward. Here's another example. Start goes to input, goes to the decision. If it is a yes, we go to processing, which goes to output, and we stop the flowchart. However, if the answer to the decision, the question is no, we have to start over with the input. So this creates a kind of loop here in that we have to keep, to keep reading an input until the answer to this question is a yes. Only then can we can continue down to our processing output and finally end our flowchart. Good. Now you know everything about flowcharts and it's time to make your own.